Welcome back, it's Peter Bradshaw here from The Guardian, back with the news and the views that matter. And I want to start with an entirely creepy and unnerving film from the director Lucille Hadzihalilovic called Earwig, a bad dream body horror noir about a little girl called Mia, played by Roman Hamelers, who is effectively kept prisoner in a flat in some gaunt European apartment building by a middle-aged man played by Paul Hilton. She has no teeth and must every morning submit to this man fitting her with dentures made of ice and also wear a bizarre contraption fixed to her lower jaw which collects the drool melt in two glass capsules, one beneath each cheek. This is Hadze Halilovic's first feature in English. It's adapted from the experimental novella of the same name by the author and artist Brian Catling. And it may also derive some inspiration from Gerard Neve's novel, The Evenings, in its ambient atmosphere of pure directionless strangeness. The film's transmission of the uncanny is deeply disorientating and discombobulating, but you might find yourself being awoken from its reverie of anxiety by a sudden horrifying stab of violence. It's a flourish of brutality which is never, in fact, entirely explained in this nightmare world as the story loops mysteriously around and in on itself. The scene is a gloomy apartment building somewhere in Europe, maybe the Netherlands or Belgium, although there's an English newspaper, sometime perhaps between the wars. And this man is Mia's jailer slash carer. Every so often he gets a gruff phone call from an anonymous voice asking about her well-being, a voice which one day instructs him to take Mia for a walk to acclimatise her to the outside world. There are plans for Mia, it seems, and the mood changes from, as it were, Lynch's razorhead to Rurg's Don't Look Now. There are new disquieting characters played by Alex Lawther and Romola Garay. It is superbly shot and exquisitely designed, a frisson of fear. On from the not especially sublime to the nonetheless entirely ridiculous, the sixth and we have to hope final film in the Jurassic Park World franchise, ponderously entitled Jurassic World Dominion and starring Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard from the recent Jurassic World reboot series and the OG legacy characters from the 90s Jurassic Park movies, Laura Dern, Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum. It's a few years into the future, dinosaurs and humans have to coexist, but there's a creepy corporation called Biosyn which is weaponizing genetically modified dinosaurs for military purposes and is also developing a raptorized mega locust which will destroy the crops of independent farmers who won't use biosyn seed. I wanted to show them something that wasn't an illusion. Something that was real. Something that they could see and touch. Creation is an act of sheer will. Life will find a way. Sadly, words cannot quite convey how pointless and convoluted and stupid and meaningless and valueless this exhausted piece of franchise digitainment is. Going to see it at the cinema is to line up like Nurse Ratchet's patients 
while a dead-eyed attendant pops IP content capsules out of an enormous blister pack. It's franchise filmmaking driven by a profit algorithm with no heart and no flair. And it pains me to say this, but the very worst thing of all is Chris Pratt as the hunky raptor wrangler himself. He used to be so funny in TV's Parks and Recreation and in Guardians of the Galaxy. And now he's just a self-admiring, boring action lead, always doing these smouldering looks to just be on the camera. You've heard of blue steel. This is brown steel or beige steel. It really is one to forget. That really is going to have to be it. Please don't forget about your moral responsibility to subscribe to this small but perfectly formed YouTube channel of mine and leave a comment to say that you've subscribed along with whatever thoughts you may have. And also, if you haven't already done this, please buy my book, The Films That Made Me, a collection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. Until next week, be seeing you.